Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about the long anticipated Rig Pi. Uh, this is a station server that's been put out by uh, MFJ. They sent it to me back in uh, June, or July rather, 10th of July. And this is the uh, station server itself. It's uh, called a Rig Pi uh, because it's a uh, item to connect your uh, radio with uh, the internet uh, using a server. This is a in computer jargon, this actually counts as a server. It's a remote computer that you log into with a web browser or something like that. Uh, the, it's a Raspberry Pi, uh, and it's called a station server because you can, from a remote location, using your web browser and maybe a little other software, uh, connect to your station and operate it from anywhere else. It's a really a very cool idea. Uh, this is the MFJ model 1234 and uh, was put together by a very bright ham by the name of Howard Nurse uh, who is expert in Linux type software. Uh, this is not a Windows computer or an Apple computer, it's a Linux computer and uh, if you've heard of the Raspberry Pi, it's just a little self-contained uh, computer here and uh, I'll show you what's inside. It's, it's really quite interesting. Um, I'll take mine apart so you don't have to take yours apart to see what's inside. Okay, I'll take the top off. And there are lots of holes in this thing. Okay, what we have in here is quite a layering of products. This down here on the bottom is the actual Raspberry Pi and it comes over this end. These, uh, this is for the internet. These are USB connectors. And that's the Raspberry Pi proper. We'll call that the first floor. The second floor is the part that takes care of CW. And you have uh, uh, jacks here for uh, the uh, uh, push to talk, paddle, key, things like that. And this uh, top floor uh, is the audio. It's got some isolation transformers and things like that. And then there is a penthouse. And the penthouse up here basically has a jack uh, that's another way of connecting uh, audio into this. If you want to just do it with a, um, like the equivalent of a RJ45 uh, type of thing. Now, uh, it varies widely. Let me put it back together. The thing varies widely in terms of uh, the different types of connections because radios are so different. This will work with essentially any radio. Um, and that would mean also, in addition to that, like a, a two meter FM radio or uh, something along those lines. Um, in this case, I wanted to connect it to my Yesu FTDX 3000. It turned out that that was, quote, simple from a hardware point of view, but I have to admit very frustrating from a software point of view. All I needed to connect was the ethernet cable right here, and I used this uh, lower left uh, USB. Um, I know you're supposed to be able to use any USB you want, but uh, it makes it easier for the computer. If you always use the same one, uh, it really helps with configuration issues in there. Uh, and I don't need any of these at all there. Now, uh, what's on the front? You've got to provide power for this. And here's the HDMI port that will go to a display for the Raspberry Pi. And then you would have to connect over here a USB keyboard and a USB mouse. Um, and this is the internet connection to Ethernet. And uh, it is supposed to have a Wi-Fi in it, but I could not ever get that to work. So I just used a wired uh, connection. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit about the power right here. We're seeing this a lot more with various uh, kits and stuff that are, are being made for 5-volt power. And uh, the problem is they did not include 
any kind of a power supply. So I had to go down to um, Office Depot. They wanted a two and a half amp uh, power supply. So I got this little uh, device here. Um, it's from Belkin, okay, and it will do two and a half amps. So this is big enough to charge a uh, iPad or something like that, and it will also run this. This is a micro USB port here, so I had to get a cable uh, that would go from uh, the USB, standard USB down to a USB, uh, I think it's a, a micro, micro cable. Um, this was at an expense. I mean, this thing right here was 25 bucks. This was just a couple bucks uh, for this cable here. But you want to make sure you get the right one. I didn't have the right cables at home. I was quite surprised that I didn't, but I didn't. So um, anyway, I got these. So this plugs into here and then into here. And then when you plug this into an outlet over here, you can watch it boot up from the uh, little things over here on the side, okay? And uh, it'll, it'll turn itself on. Now, um, so the connections that go to this are the um, USB cable, which I'll connect right here, and the Ethernet cable, which goes right there. And now that thing is actually connected to my radio. This is the uh, Ethernet to my main internet switch, and this is the uh, USB cable that goes to the back of the Yesu. That's all the connections that it needs. And there are a lot of radios today that have uh, built-in sound cards in them so that you can uh, connect this directly. Now, the problem is that the owner's manual, which was printed sometime in the uh, June time frame right here, it does not have an actual date, just 2019 and it needs a version number uh, so we'll know what we have the manual is designed for if you have a radio that you will make direct audio connections to okay um, and not the usb type radio the usb type connection needs an entirely different approach and it is not covered in the manual and that led to all kinds of issues, but there is now on the internet at rigpi.com, rigpi.com, there is a host of information available, uh, including a video that I will talk about a little bit later that addresses the idea of these connections that are made with the USB port. It's actually for the 590 the TS590S, um, <clears throat> but it works, the same instructions work for this. Uh, as a server, this thing has quite a few pieces of software on it, and um, the main one is uh, it's a web server called the RigPi server, and that is how you do all of the connections except the audio. Um, and it allows you to do push to talk and, and things like that. Now, if you have the radio like I have, you'll need another piece of software. It's already on here, but you'll need a companion piece of software on your PC or whatever device uh, called Mumble. And the companion to Mumble is Murmur. So where they come, this sounds so much like Linux. Uh, they do odd and unusual things like that. So um, there are many, many ducks, and they all need to be in a row for this to work. Um, I had it working uh, once 
before, but I had a bunch of videos I had to do right away. And by the time I got to this morning, I had forgotten that, had to re-research it. I came this close to sending it back and saying, I'm sorry, I can't do it. When I finally found the, the right answer for that, and it turns out it's in this video that I'm gonna tell you how to find. Um, the, the device is very lightly documented, which is another way to say that it needs considerable expansion to incorporate the lessons learned since the release of the documentation. Um, fortunately, most of the important passwords, and every piece of software has got its own password, um, the passwords are in section 1.7 on page 25. Okay. Now, they use the term RSS to stand for RigPy Station Server. I wish they'd stick with RigPy and leave it at that, because RSS has other meanings in computing. Uh, so this really had me <laughs> going around in circles for a while. But now I mentioned the, the thing about power. Um, I got the Belkin two-port home charger that puts out 24 watts, which is over four amps at five volts. So that amply supplies this thing. Remember, it's not just the rig pie that you're powering. You're powering all those daughter boards uh, that are stacked up on top of it. Um, now, in the rigpie.com uh, webpage, there's a discussion group called groups.io, and it's got for rig pie, and then they've got files, they've got um, you can subscribe so you get the um, uh, traffic that goes back and forth. I commend them on how well they moderate that. There's no snarky comments. There's no unkind comments. It's just helpfulness. And Howard Nurse, uh, who is the inventor of this device, um, it, it really goes out of his way to try to help and, and give some great information. Uh, and so uh, he actually responded to my comments earlier and uh, I was able to get a response on how to do this and, and made it all work. Now, when you get everything hooked up, like I said, there's a million ducks and they've all gotta be in a row. Once you get them in a row, you're fine. You're good. The device works. It works as advertised. It does what it says it will do. You can control your rig from your phone, your iPad, a computer. You can do it in your house. You can do it somewhere else. It really does work. Um, it's just that, well, what's my favorite mantra? Be persistent. Um, and don't try and do what I did, which was figured out on, on my own. I figured that, you know, I can read the instructions. I can do that. but. Go ahead, get on the forum and ask for help. And uh, our, our real kind of tiptoeing forward on is um, a resource that would say, you've got this rig, this is what you do. Now, I think at this point you can kind of define, divide the rigs into classes. There are the rigs where you will have to do um, Menu or, or you know, recable the audio because it won't have an internal sound card or so on. Uh, most of the new rigs have internal sound cards. Okay, so there we are. That was a kind of a rapid look at the RigPi station server. Very interesting little device. Uh, it's something you can really get into and set it up. And You know, if you're someone who's often away from home in a hotel room or someplace like that, and you just like to operate the radio, you can do that. Also, this can work in your home. You can operate your radio from the side of your pool or uh, while you're doing whatever you want. So there's lots of different things you can do with it. I commend MFJ for coming up with a product this sophisticated. Uh, this is quite something. Uh, you'll learn about computers as you try to use it, and you'll do well with it. So don't forget, on the channel, there is the support page at dcastler.com support. All different ways that you can help this channel financially a little bit throw a couple bucks in the tip jar, sign up for a couple bucks every month, 
Um, you can buy stuff from Amazon, and uh, a little piece of that comes to me. Uh, lots of different ways that you can support it. The biggest way you can support the channel is to subscribe and uh, show interaction with it by leaving a comment or liking or something like that. And I am uh, always look forward to the Saturday live stream when I'm on real time with uh, Augies from around the world. If you're a subscriber, you're an Augie. Uh, either that or you're a Cornish pastry. Um, <laughs> somebody else is using the word too. So, thank you so very much. Until next time, 73.